Hi all, I am delighted to introduce you to another short and sweet for the French defence. So the excellent author Brian Tillis uh, has created another great introduction to his French defence trainer and he's taken some of the uh, most used variations that you'll need to know, the, the most critical first. So let's have a look at this. So for the French defence player, uh, this is the French defence in just 17 core lines. Now I've uh, been through this excellent video, I suggest you do, it's over an hour of free content, this excellent video explaining all these lines here. Now I've uh, got some comments on particular lines of interest. Uh, so let's have a look at one of them. So the advanced variation. Brian makes an excellent introductory case that one of the key imbalances of the French defence is this c8 bishop. And this funny looking knight e7 is not something that routinely uh, I've been aware of that explicitly. I am aware that if you don't play knight e7, if you play b6 and bishop a6, then there's chop chop and queen a4 check winning the knight. So this way of playing it knight e7, we're aiming to get rid of the bad bishop. Uh, and Brian has outlined that in many situations in the French defence, it's good to have a lighthouse, uh, a kind of checklist of what you want to do, what what part of the board you want to play on, what pieces you want to exchange off. Uh, so this checklist, which he introduces, is also absolutely excellent. And the major component of that checklist is the French defence classic imbalance that you offer to the opponent, this bad bishop. If we can get rid of the bad bishop, then uh, we'll have very good uh, promising end games without any nightmares of for example good knight versus bad bishop this this mechanism knight e7 can be employed to get a knight here first putting pressure on d4 as well but also making it possible uh, to play for this bishop a6 plan if white tries to thwart things by playing for b4 b5 we can simply stop b4 and then p proceed with the basic plan. Now you might think, well, isn't there a downside of the b5 square? This is talked about basically you can play c takes so you get the b4 square to play with potentially and still put pressure on this diagonal and in a way the b5 piece becomes a kind of target. Uh, so you can get a good position like this and should be absolutely fine for black. For example like this and you take care carefully with the bishop and you should be fine. Uh, so that's a very interesting idea, knight e7, which is introduced in this course. Uh, so, and the basic, you know, the navigational kind of underlying checklist is, is critical that he talks about. That in many of the variations, you see that idea. Now, here, the exchange variation is one of is very important to address because a lot of players have gone off the French because uh, it, they feel that the exchange variation white gets a kind of false draw. Uh, Brian has basically said. The, the name of the game is to try and create some imbalances despite white trying for the symmetrical pawn structure. So he talks about, um, you know, if, if white is playing uh, with this, then you don't have to play bishop d6 symmetrically. You can bring the knight out. And my good friend Alex F. Lontis uh, has given me many tips on the French defence over the years and he's also said basically he wins most of his exchange French variations. People underestimate that with black you can really keep the imbalances going and here this early queen move stops bishop f4 because white wants to get rid of this bishop for this one uh, and basically you can have this sharp variation where bishop g5 is threatened you can stop that and there's even a very interesting idea of pawn sack this is a really beautiful idea expressed here that you can sacrifice this pawn and cheekily gain a key tempo pretty soon with uh, knight f5 but the key one king d7 so your rooks are connected hello hello you're ready to expose the white king in the center and there's a nice tactic here juicy tactic i wonder if you can spot it without looking on the right okay knight e3 juicy tactic and this gives black a brilliant position so very interesting ideas are expressed even in the exchange French defence, which uh, puts off a lot of people from playing the French defence fundamentally. But yeah, if you can keep the imbalances going, there's still much to play for. Now this 
uh, if you remember the Alpha Zero shortest loss ever to Stockfish, uh, Brian does not recommend accepting this gambit. In fact, like me, he plays it with white, and I've won quite a few over the board games with white after h4, and they've accepted the gambit. But really, this is a nice, safe approach recommended h6. Don't go for the extra pawn, uh, just play h6. And let's see the recipe here. Queen g4, we can actually castle on this occasion. Uh, without the dark square bishop being a menace, you know, for bishop h6 or whatever. And now f4, c5, strike at the center and dissolve uh, the center there. f6 is justified here, and you can get a good position like this. So queen c5, ready to answer f5 with e5. Very, very nice position for black to have. So yeah, if you want to avoid, <laughs> uh, yeah, Leela's shortest, um, Alpha Zero's shortest loss. Don't accept the gambit. That's a great recommendation there in that chapter, which caught my eye. Uh, so I'm just going over the really, you know, the, the re things I feel passionate about. I passionately agree with in these in these recommendations. Now in this variation, in the classical, uh, we see here White setting up that classical uh, pawn center, and there's a very interesting idea that sometimes B6 disguises a plan as if as if black's not going to be aggressive later and it's sort of waiting for white to castle and then you can pounce basically you can do something you don't normally do in, which is to play the move c4 but here because of the king's position it's more than justified and my good friend paul georgiou has recommended this many years ago this you just play this and you play a very strong uh, attack here and even gambit the pawn you want an open road to the king's to the king there to be king's crushing this gives a king's crushing flavor with white casting on the queen side and what's even great about this the knight can swing by to e4 and you've got the f file pressure as well so a great recommendation there that kind of cheeky b6 waiting for white to castle not realizing that's going to be playing c4 so i was quite excited to see that recommendation there in the classical let's have a look at this in the tarash variation so e4, e6, d4, d5, the Tarash, knight d2, which avoids the pin of the winner. c5, e takes, queen takes. This is all pretty standard stuff. Queen d7, and uh, queen d7 is the recommendation. So it avoids some of the nastiest lines of the main line, and it adds to established theory in the French. <coughs> Pardon me. Castles, knight c6. And basically, uh, there's, a, there's a really nice attitude here of solving that fundamental issue in the French, this bishop, solve it with seemingly casualness to what's happening on the king side. <clears throat> so you play b5, bishop b7, bishop g5, and it looks as though you should be concerned about the doubled pawns. Bishop takes d4, but here queen c6, threatening mate. And so that weakens that diagonal bit. And now castle. It doesn't matter about queen d3 and bishop c2 here. It doesn't really matter because this, the d pawn is a target. So even if white takes on f6, plays this check, you can have a good position here. It's absolutely fine. You've sorted out your problem pieces. The king's relatively safe. And this check is harmless. The king will just go to e7. You're going to pick up d4. It's going to be absolutely fine. So that was very interesting as well to see in the Tarash, this emphasis on that light square bishop. Now here, and the Labordonnet variation, which we've seen recently on the King's Crusher channel. Uh, Magnus Carlsen played this with white. But here, this radical knight h6 going straight in for that f5. Now, this is uh, an interesting example. So white also plays like Magnus Carlsen did in this example here, playing for this um, d4. And it looks as though black's threatening uh, this. Um, now here, white played a kind of uh, a double-edged move where it's, it's described as uh, the cure is, is worse than the issue really g4 white didn't really necessarily have to do uh, g4 uh, there are some other tricky ideas but let's say g4 is played what's the idea you can put this back and you can try and undermine the f5 square so this is great stuff to absolutely know uh, the recipe for so knight b4 uh, 
and you, you've got a very nice secure possession here with the black pieces. So an equal possession, no attack for white on the king side, and in the long term black has the safer king and better prospects in the upcoming heavy piece endgame. So I really like the recommendations. Check out this uh, short and sweet. So this is absolutely free to check out and a whole one hour video there which I checked out with great interest because of friends like Alex Cephalontis playing the French and Paul Georgiou. They've taught me a lot of tips for the French defence. I've played it myself quite a bit. So great stuff to check out there. So if you want to check out that out, check out that bit.ly link there. So that's 2 capital K small w small q small x capital T capital Z. I'll put that in the description and in the pinned comment. So I hope you check that out. Great interest for me. Great ideas there in in those core lines. Okay. Thanks very much.